Hello booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Bookes and Books. This will be a quick tag. I hope it's going to be quick because this is lunchtime, so I have 15 minutes to film it. It is the book acquiring tag. It was created by Kirsten at the channel Enter the Book, which is a new to me channel and looks super interesting. And I was tagged by Greg from Another Bibliophile Reads. He seems to think that I need to reflect upon my book acquiring habits. He may be right. <laughs> Question number one. Do you plan your book purchases ahead or impulse buy? I think there's a halfway between planning and impulse. Um, sometimes I plan because sometimes I want specific books. For example, this weekend I went to buy two specific books because I need to read them for the booktube prize and I knew I won't get them in time from the library. So I bought two specific books. But generally, it's more browsing. It's not completely an impulse because I know I'm going to buy a book, but I just don't know which one. I go to the store, I browse, and I let myself be inspired by what is available. So that, that, that's my method, if we can call it that a method. Question two, how do you decide what books to buy? So let's say that I'm in the store and I'm trying to be inspired. I generally am inspired. Um, I look, I read the summary of the book. Generally, it's that. So why I'm attracted to one book over another. Why do I pick one book up to read the summary at the back? It may be because I've heard of it on BookTube, because I've read a review of it in some newspaper. Um, it could be just because it's somewhere in my subconscious. Uh, I know the author. I know the book. Or uh, just the, the cover is pretty. I don't know. It's really... I. I I let my subconscious make the decision of picking a book up and then I read the summary at the back. Uh, sometimes I put it, I put the book right back on the shelf um, and I may read a page or two, uh, sometimes in the middle. Um, and then of course there's the price. Uh, I don't normally buy new releases because they're just too expensive. Uh, I sort of have a mental price limit for a book if it's over $25. I tend not to buy them. And of course, it depends on how thick the book is, because if it's $25 for a book that is in fact a short story, it's going to be too expensive and I'm not going to pay that. Oh, and I'm speaking Canadian dollars, by the way, in case you're new to my channel. I live in Canada and Ottawa, so I'm talking about Canadian dollars. And in used bookstores, of course, the condition of the book plays a big role. I don't like books that look battered, that are stained, that smell, um, underlined, or I prefer my books when they look new. So I tend to buy new books, but I'm slowly getting used to used books. Um, I, I'm slowly finding the charm of shopping in used bookstores. Uh, question three, what is your philosophy on where you shop online or in person? Almost exclusively in person. Um, the last time I bought a book online, I think it was a year ago. I placed an order with Book Outlet and I haven't done in a while. So it's mainly in person. Large or small, both. Uh, there are some large bookstores where I live. Uh, Chapters is the main chain and I'm a regular customer, but I also go to smaller bookstores. My books in French, I buy them at a small independent library that is right across the street from the big chapters downtown in Ottawa. Um, I go also to independent bookstores like uh, Perfect Books, uh, that is on Elgin. Uh, I went last summer to Octopus Books, which is a teeny tiny store, which is absolutely lovely, but it's not that close where I live. I cannot really go there on foot. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm a customer at pretty much every bookstore in Ottawa. <laughs> um, 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 next question is physical, digital or audio? Physical. I've never paid for a digital book. I've never paid for an audio book. I borrow them from the library. I have a subscription to Scribd. I tried a few audio books, but I cannot say that I'm a fan. For some reason, it doesn't really work for me. I much prefer reading with my eyes than with my ears. So it's physical books. When I talk about my TV, VR, it's strictly the physical books that I own, like these, um, that I have not read yet. So, yeah. and uh, was there new or used? Uh, so as I said, I prefer them in good condition. So I prefer my books new, but I I'm slowly warming up to used books. Question number four, what about little free libraries? What do you think about them? Have you used one? Why or why not? I have used them. Uh, there are three little free libraries that are within walking distance of where I live, like within a 20 minute walk. I can hit all three little free libraries in a 20 minute walk, which is fun. And during the pen, the, the, the 
the early days of the pandemic, I should say, when everything was closed, uh, that is when I started to really use them because uh, um, normally I used to walk to work and that was my daily walk. And the little free libraries are not in the direction of downtown, they are the other way. So uh, after I started working from home, I needed an excuse to go outside. So I went for a walk pretty much every day. And that's where I saw the little free libraries. And I thought, oh my God, it's awesome. I'm going to use them. And I did. And I found quite a few things in there. The last, no, not the last time, the second to last time that I went there, uh, I found Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. And I say second to last because, of course, when I saw this tag, I saw the question about the free libraries and I thought, oh, it's been a while since I've been there in that direction. So, of course, I walked in that direction and I found books in the little free library. I found uh, two romance books by an author I've never read. And the fun thing about little free libraries is that you can try anything that you find there. It's just it's free. It doesn't cost anything. So this romance writer, if I don't like her, I'll just bring the book back and that's going to be that. It won't. It won't have cost me anything and I'm go and I'm trying a new author I have I don't know and I also found uh, what did I find um oh uh, Muriel Sparks the prime of Miss Brody and there was a bookmark in it from Winnipeg so that, that's kind of fun to find this sort of thing I don't know if the book has traveled but the bookmark certainly did <laughs> Question number five. How do you feel after acquiring a book? Do you share like in a book haul or a diary? I tend to share in book hauls. If I bought multiple books at the same time, I will do a book haul video. Sometimes I will just include it in a wrap up or in a TBR check in. TBR check in. Um, and I do write them down in my notebook. So it's not really a journal. It's a it's a notebook for books. Um, and when I buy a book, I write it down. So I write the title, the author, and I make a little square. And when I read it, I fill the little square. So these are the books that I've bought in the last two months. Um, yeah, this is, um, I, I did a book haul video supporting my local bookstores about two months ago, at the end of February, I think, or perhaps early March, uh, because uh, there were some protests downtown in Ottawa, and that meant uh, the bookstores were closed, and when the protesters were finally sent home, I decided to support the local bookstores, and I bought a whole bunch of books. I ended up buying 20 books, and then... Um, yeah, and then in April I bought seven more, and now I've brought back three from... Uh, no, I said in April, and in March I bought seven more, and then in April I bought... Um, uh, I bought a couple of books for the Booktube Prize, and yesterday I went to a little free library. So yeah, I've acquired 30-something books in the past two months. Yeah, and I've read one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Yet. <laughs> Question number six. How, um, how do you feel looking at your books that haven't been read? Does it matter if it's currently a lot or a little amount? Yes, it matters. I feel overwhelmed by the number of books that I own and that I haven't read yet. Um, it started last year. I decided to count the number of unread books I had and I ended up with a number of approximately 150. And that's more than I read in a year. It's a, it probably, uh, if it wasn't for the pandemic, it probably would be two years worth of reading. And uh, so at that time, I decided, okay, I will now keep myself accountable. And uh, I will diminish that TBR. And I made some rules for myself. I said, first, I'm going to read 10 of my own books without acquiring one. I failed. And then I said, I'm going to read three of my own books and that going to to give me credit to acquire one. So some sort of three for one formula. And I failed at that too. So um, that is the page that I keep track of my TBR. So it started at 150 and I wanted to bring it back to 50 in about two years. And at the end of April, it stood at 146. So in um, seven months, I diminished my TBR by four books. and. That was at the end of the month, uh, the end of March, because since then I've bought a few more and I've acquired a few more from the little free library. So um, it's not going well at all. And I feel overwhelmed, as I said, because I know I'm going to 
acquire more books. I like to buy books and I feel happy when I buy books. But when I receive people home and they see all the books, I had, I was asked a few times, have you read all of these books? And I was so proud to be able to say, yes, I've read them all. And now th this pile, this is all a bunch of unread books. And uh, behind this chair, there's the famous uh, TBR card that is uh, full, completely full of books. And I have some other books scattered here and there that are, that are unread. So um, yeah, it, it, it's too many books. I just have too many unread books. I'm not happy with that. So uh, the, the, the solution would be to get rid of the books simply just to uh, unhaul the books that I don't think I'm going to read. But that's the thing. I think I'm going to read them all. I want to read them all. So um, I'm learning to live with my TBR. <laughs> um, 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 um. How do you decide what number of unread books is the right amount? I don't know what the right amount is. Uh, last year I said 50 would be good. Um, I, I'm thinking if it was just that shelf, whatever number of books fit on that shelf, I'd probably be very, very happy about that. But I just know that 100 is and 50, it's just too much. It, it's too many, too many books, too many unread books, and I'm not happy with that number. But then I should do something about it, right? But I don't appear to be doing much. <laughs> Question number eight, do you have a TBR game or process for reading them? No, I don't. I tried it in January. I tried to set a fixed TBR for January and um, I failed miserably at it. I am a mood reader. Uh, of course, I love readathons on BookTube, so if there's a particular readathon, I will probably go to my TBR and find books that fit that readathon. Uh, for example, in March, there was March Mystery Madness, so I read a few mysteries, and I, and I read one big mammoth, so I went to my TBR for the mammoths and looked at them and decided to pick one. Um, in May, there will be... Um, May of the Moderns that will be hosted by Margaret Pinard. I will leave a link in the description box and that will focus on books published between 1900 and 1945. So basically the first half of the 20th century. So I will go to my TBR and see which books fit that description. And I know there are, there's a whole bunch of them. So that, that is a bit how I decide which book to read, but it's strictly a mood reading thing. Question nine, do you have a book buying problem? Uh, if so, what is the nature of it? And can it be adjusted? I think my book buying or book acquiring problem is that I cannot go for a long time without acquiring some books. I was tagged by Greg, who is crazy. <laughs> I'm saying this with a lot of admiration. He went on a 100 book challenge. He read 100 of his own books without acquiring any new books. And as I said, I tried last year to go on a 10 book challenge just to read 10 of my own books without acquiring one. And I failed. I, I cannot go because 10 books for me is about a month of reading and I cannot go a month without acquiring a book. So I think there's this sort of feedback loop created in my brain that uh, if I feel stress, I'll go to a bookstore because that makes me happy. And then I'll get a book and I'll be happy and I'll be satisfied and I'll get all the endorphins and I don't know which... Uh, hormones that make me happy. So I sort of somewhat stress buy books, something like that. It's not stress eating, it's stress buying books. It's some sort of uh, stress relief uh, activity. And in a way, it doesn't matter much because I I rarely spend hundreds of dollars in one go. The In fact, the only time I did that was to support the local bookstores when I bought uh, the equivalent of $100 of books in one store and then $100 of books in another store. So that's the only time where I buy, that, where I did go overboard, I would say. Other than that, it tends to be one or two books at a time, sometimes sometimes three, but it generally it's rarely more than two books at a time and not new releases because I think they're too expensive. So financially, I can afford it. It's really not a problem financially. And then um, it, it doesn't really have any impact on my life other than the fact that I have a whole bunch of unread books and it bothers me a little bit. But it's not like a drug addiction problem or an alcohol problem that, that these are real problems. So the book buying is just perhaps, perhaps if I was not living alone, it could be annoying to someone else, but I'm living alone. So it's not annoying to me. So I say it's not a problem. Um, and, well, and the problem is that I can't stop. Did I say that, that I can't stop? <laughs> um, if I decided to stop eating chocolate, I wouldn't be able to. I don't have the willpower to do that. And I don't think I have the willpower to stop buying books. 
Maybe I could try again this 10 book challenge. Just read 10 of my own books before I acquire another one. And I would be allowed to read the shortest books. And now would be a good time to do it because I don't need to acquire books. I have all the books I need for the booktube prize for this round, so I don't need to acquire anything. Do I do that? Do I try that? I'm going to think about it. Question 10. Question 10. Tag two or three other to ponder the book buying process. I'm going to tag. I'm going to tag. Um, I'm going to tag Aaron Facer. Uh, a few weeks ago, he did a book haul video and he said that he was, was supposed to be on a book buying ban. So perhaps he wants to ponder his book acquiring habits. And I'm going to tag Mariana Mas Books because uh, in Spanish, Mas means more. So basically, the name of her channel is Mariana More Books. And she's sort of inciting us to buy more books. And I think she should face the consequences of the name of her channel. <laughs> well, no, she if she wants to, of course, it's just an invitation in both cases. And then there's an extra prompt. No, you are awesome just as you are. Being a book lover is amazing. And I agree. So thank you everyone for watching. I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!